Welcome back everyone, Mike Seitz here again and in today's video we're going to be discussing the FAA Part 108 BVLOS Notice of Proposed Rule. This will be explained in detail and in case you didn't know, BVLOS stands for Flying Your Drone Beyond Visual Line of Sight. We'll go over the President's initial executive order, Part 108 proposal deadlines, BVLOS requirements, organizational roles and personnel responsibilities, security measures and industry impacts everything you need to know are you ready let's go June 6, 2025, President Donald J. Trump issued an executive order, 14307, for unleashing American drone dominance. And the primary purpose of this order was to enhance drone productivity within the United States by reshaping the future of aviation. The focus is on expanding the use of drones and supporting their exports by use of various incentive mechanisms. And one of these mechanisms is the ability to fly a drone beyond visual line of sight. Now within the EO executive order, agencies were directed to propose a new BVLOS rule within 30 days. And also the EO states that this proposed rule must be finalized within 240 days. And as expected, August 5th, 2025, 30 days later, well actually August 7th, the FAA published its Part 108 Notice of Proposed Rulemaking NPR this is a document that exceeds 730 pages, and it's a draft version of the new rules for beyond visual line of sight operations. Now, keeping up with the timeline, after August 7th, there is a 60-day period, an open window for the general public, industry stakeholders, companies, and individuals to submit feedback or comments, and that window will remain open until early October of 2025. Now, it's important to understand about the review and revisions, the FAA reviews all comments and they will make adjustments if needed and then move forward towards issuing the final rule. And if you'd like to post a public comment, well, here's how you do it. I'll have a link in the description so you can go to it, but you're looking for normalized unmanned aircraft systems beyond visual line of sight operations. This will be at the Federal Registry. And once you do that, just post your comment, leave your email address at the bottom and you're good to go. Now, once finalized, the rule becomes official, set in stone, and operators must comply. So the 240-day clock is ticking towards a final ruling expected by the end of February 2026. So you can see that this is only a proposal and not a final ruling. Now let's talk about the requirements for BV loss. And the first thing is to understand the difference between FAA Part 107 and FAA Part 108. If you're flying a drone commercially under Part 107, you'll need to have a remote pilot certificate, but a remote pilot certificate is not required when you're flying beyond visual line of sight under Part 108. Now going back to Part 107, you are able to operate beyond visual line of sight, but it requires a waiver and that is handled on a case-by-case -case basis for approval. But here's the catch-22. When this proposal is finalized, flying beyond visual line of sight under Part 107 will no longer be acceptable or approved. You will no longer be able to apply for a waiver. But if you're flying beyond visual line of sight under Part 108, no certification is required. So here's the question. What exactly do you need to fly under Part 108? Well, tentatively, according to the proposed rule, you will need to be an organization, not an individual. Part 108 shifts the accountability of individual pilots, such as those who fly under Part 107, over to an operational organizational type platform. And what I mean is that you need to apply as a company or a government agency or some other applicable type of business entity. There are two main pathways in order for you to gain authority to fly under Part 108. The first is an operational permit. And this is a simpler, low risk type of permit that covers cases such as agriculture, infrastructure inspections, surveying, training, small package deliveries. All of these are low risk and they fall under the operating permit. Now the second way to become authorized is to have an operating certificate. This is a higher risk and it involves large scale, higher risk, complex operations. And you can see that both of these pathways to gain authority are not your average ordinary fly in the park type of situations. The process involves FAA approval and this approval has to do with safety 
systems and training programs, training management, SMS, and also the drones, which can weigh up to, get this, 1,320 pounds, must meet certain airworthiness requirements in order to be accepted also. So by explaining all of this to you, you can see exactly where this is pertaining to, who it's tailored for, what type of organizations are going to be using this Part 108. It's not going to be your average fly in the park type of situation. And also on top of that, all drones must broadcast remote ID and have what's called DAA. That is an acronym that stands for detect and avoid. So let me break this down to you right now. The drone that you currently fly right now does not have the ability to detect when another drone is close to it, does it? But under Part 108, the drone must have the capability to have DAA detect and avoid as a required feature. And this system also works in tandem with remote ID so the drone itself is visible electronically by broadcasting data. Now, most of you know that I will go into detail once this proposal goes final, then I will do a complete research and evaluation to find out all of the details, whether they have changed anything or whether they have not. I'll have all of the updates ready for you. So who's actually going to be operating this drone beyond visual line of sight? Is it going to be a pilot, a remote pilot? No, it's going to be neither because this does not require a Part 107 remote pilot certificate or a remote pilot. The two that are going to be involved will be what's called an operation supervisor or a flight coordinator. Coordinator. Both will oversee the compliance and safety of the operation and also monitor the flight in case they need to intervene. So you already know that I'm speaking of an autonomous system that's basically going to be doing everything itself and there is going to be someone watching the operation just in case something needs to be taken care of so they can intervene. But other than that, it's hands off. Basically, the wording in the proposal mentions how they want to have more of an emphasis emphasis on autonomous drone operations rather than having remote pilots controlling small unmanned aircrafts. Now, I just want to clarify one thing that was mentioned in the proposal, and that is in regard to recreational flyers. Now, to be clear about this, let me reiterate, you need to apply for either a permit or a certificate to operate, and the operation is for an organization, not for a hobbyist. So all of you who had your hopes up and wanting to fly, beyond visual line of sight. Well, that's not going to happen. But what is going to be happening are some of the existing rules that are under Part 107. For example, you still have to fly at or below 400 feet AGL. The airspace conformity for regulated controlled airspace still needs to be maintained. The serial number of your remote ID broadcast module still needs to be listed and indicated on your aircraft registration. And now by mentioning this remote ID broadcast module, there is is a change. Under the current Part 107 rules, you could not use a single remote ID broadcast module on multiple drones. But now with Part 108, you are allowed to use a single remote ID broadcast module on multiple drones. Now, something else within this proposal with regard to package delivery rules under Part 107. You see, the current ruling technically allows commercial package delivery under Part 107, but they have big limitations. The weight of the drone must be under 55 pounds. Visual line of sight must be maintained. You must have a max altitude of 400 feet AGL. Daylight waiver rules. Operations over people needed special approval. Air carrier certifications. All of these made it very difficult and only a handful of companies were able to do this, such as Amazon Prime Air, Zipline, UPS, and they all had to go through a special exemption process and Part 135 certification. But get this, when this proposal goes through, and notice how I just said when, you will only be able to conduct package delivery under Part 108, no longer Part 107. This Part 108 proposed rule for 2025 is a major shift in package delivery, and it's designed and will be recognized under operating permits. The key details to explain here, there will be no more case-by-case -case waivers. The drones can be up to 1,320 pounds. BVLOS beyond visual line of sight will be allowed by design. You'll have two pathways to gain authorization, either an operating permit or an operating certificate. 
Remote ID is required and the drone must have the capabilities of detect and avoid DAA. No remote pilots, but there will be operational accountability for supervisors and flight coordinators. There will be no certifications required, but you must go through training for safety management systems, SMS, for higher risk operations. And most importantly, in regard to deliveries and air carrier rules, Part 108 is meant to replace the requirement for every delivery operation operator to get a Part 135 certification. So you can clearly see by the way I explained all of this that Part 108 is opening the door for scalability in regard to drone deliveries. Now let's talk about another key component in regard to Part 108 beyond visual line of sight. And this has to do with what the FAA terms as ADSPs, Automated Data Service Providers. And what are they, you're asking? Well, within the context of this proposal, Part 108, an ADSP is an FAA-accepted third-party provider that delivers automated digital services to enable safe and compliant beyond visual line of sight operations. To put it simply, it's it's like a digital traffic service for drones. You see, whenever it is that you're flying beyond visual line of sight under Part 108, you will need a constant awareness of the airspace and other aircraft that are around you. And since you cannot visually see the drone, right, you're going to need constant awareness of where the drone actually is. So how are you going to achieve that when you do not have visual line of sight? Well, here is the FAA's answer within this proposal. You can simply subscribe to an ADSP, an automated data service provider, and the ADSP will automatically give you airspace information for where your drone can or cannot fly, air traffic data, which will tell you where other drones are and where other aircrafts are located. Conformance monitoring will conduct routine checks to make sure that the drone is staying on its approved course. Alerts and avoidance to warn you when there's something that is close or whether you're about to have a collision or some risk poses an eminent threat towards the safety of the aircraft. To sum this whole thing up, an ADSP is a third-party provider that supplies real-time information in regard to airspace and traffic safety, and it is a requirement under this proposed rule to fly legally under Part 108. Now, there's much more to this, and it did take a lot of time to go through the 170 pages, and I wanted to be able to break it down concisely and just touch on the main points so you have a basic understanding about what Part 108 actually is. And you know that there's much more information considering that this is a 170 page document, but I will break everything down in detail on another video. Now, lastly, I wanted to touch briefly on what some of the possible impacts may be on the community in regard to this new proposal. And on the positive side, I see a much more efficient package delivery system. For example, medical supply, transport, infrastructure, inspections beyond visual line of sight, the creation of ADSP service providers, a much more effective and efficient public safety system and emergency response. And overall, it will be beneficial to the environment. Now on the downside, I see that communities may be affected because of privacy concerns of drones flying overhead, safety concerns for flying over schools or residential areas, will have more drones in the air which will add to the congestion, and there may be some urban areas where the noise levels may increase. Remember that this proposal offers community engagement, so you'll be able to post your public comments. The deadline is October of 2025, so voice your concerns, and by February of 2025, 26, we'll see what the final results are. I hope this video was helpful and informative for you. If it was, please give me a like to help my ratings. Subscribe if you'd like to get notifications on the up and coming videos. And until then, I will see you all on the next video.